Hello, we're Andy, the Maniacal Cinephile, and welcome to Boots to Reboots. Today, we're going to the prom. It is a rite of passage. That we never get to do. Because someone got us thrown in the loony bin. Like you could have found us three dates. All of these Prom Night 2008 is a very loose remake of the 1980 Canadian slasher of the same name. The original was directed by TV director Paul Lynch from a screenplay by William Gray, who had just wrote The Changeling, a great haunted house mystery film. The original stars Jamie Lee Curtis in her third straight horror movie, cementing herself as a scream queen, and Leslie Nielsen as a father grieving over his dead daughter. Ah, he's hilarious. While he's known for Airplane and Naked Gun, let's not forget all of his horror movies. The plot follows high school senior Kimberly Hammond and her friends who are targeted at their prom by a mysterious killer seeking revenge for the accidental death of Kimberly's younger sister, Robin, six years earlier. Kim is unaware that her so-called friends accidentally scared Robin into falling out of a window to her death. She pulled a Clapton! The kids vowed to never tell their secret, but someone else was watching that day. The original was an immediate financial success, and was Canada's highest earning horror film of 1980, spawning three sequels. Plus, let's not forget the disco-heavy soundtrack. <laughs> It's basically Friday the 13th meets Saturday Night Fever. Or Halloween meets Carrie. The remake was directed by Nelson McCormick, also mostly known for directing television. It stars a bunch of 20 to 30 year olds playing high school seniors and Idris Elba. Wait, what? Idris Elba's in this? Was it a prank? The film was announced in 2004 with a script by Stephen Susco, known for The Grudge 1 and 2. The final script was written by J.S. Cardone, who would work with the director again on the Stepfather remake. So, let's cross Prom Night off the list and see if it deserves... The Boot. <sighs> I'm gonna spike the punch. Original film? <laughs> My ass! The remake is no longer about Kimberly Hammond or her dead sister Robin. In 2005, Bridgeport native Donna Keppel, a high school freshman, returns home from the movie theater with her friend Lisa Hines to find her father and little brother murdered. <laughs> It would have been the worst thing she saw that night, but the theater was showing the Fog remake. <laughs> Donna hides under the bed and witnesses her mother's death. That awkward moment when you're hiding under the bed, 
And your mom is being penetrated. <laughs> we see that the killer is Donna's former teacher, Richard Fenton, who has become obsessed with her. And why is he obsessed with her? Cause blonde? But Andy, the original killer's identity was a mystery, like Scooby-Doo. True, but writing a mystery movie takes effort. Help me! Help me! Help me! I'm in a remake of Prom Night! And then what happens? I'd turn off the movie, but Dr. Oddcoitus says making these videos helps with my anger management! They went away for such a long time. I can't believe they're back. The return of the fanny pack! Three years later, Fenton is locked up 2,300 miles away. Donna, now a high school senior, sees a psychiatrist and takes meds to cope with her depression. Is today Tuesday or Wednesday? Eh, better take them both. Donna and her friends Lisa and Claire then get ready for their senior prom at the salon. It's prom night. That boy's planning on getting laid. <laughs> yeah, late to rest. While checking out her hair, Donna is stunned. <laughs> she spent all that money. And her hair looks exactly the same. Some trivia, the house in the background is the original Michael Myers house. It's now a chiropractor's office. We learn Donna now lives with her Aunt Karen and Uncle Jack. Ah, oh, god damn it. Andy, what is it? It's a medicine cabinet in a horror movie. They might as well slap a warning sticker on the glass. Actually, I, uh, think I'll leave it open. We learned that Donna isn't taking her meds. I don't want to be numb tonight. I want to remember everything. I don't. Nothing about this movie is worth remembering. Donna's boyfriend Bobby, who's 29 but playing 18, arrives to pick her up. You look so good. Clean up very well. <laughs> this was him yesterday. It's amazing what a shave and a haircut can do. Betty? Uh, this one. Oh, oh, so cheesy. Okay. Say prom night dumpster, baby. There we go. So Donna leaves with her friends and their boyfriends, Ronnie and Michael. And off to get murdered, they go. Chase the victory. At the police station, Detective Wynn, who arrested Fenton three years ago, learns that he's escaped. We found journals of this guy having fantasies about this girl. He had pictures of her everywhere. What kind of sad loser keeps fantasy journals? <laughs> After the trial, things settled down a little bit until she started getting the letters. Some sick shit too. Credit card applications. The bastards know her parents are dead, and she needs a co-signer. The kids arrive to the prom at the Pacific Grand, and per hotel policy, there's a creeper in the lobby. He'd do anything to kiss those lips that kissed Donna's. Fenton reserves a room on Donna's floor and stabs a housekeeper to get the master key. The hanger said, do not disturb! Good thing he requested extra towels. But now, he'll never get a mint on his pillow. Detective Wynn alerts Uncle Jack and Aunt Karen that Fenton is loose. <sighs> Most women get weak in the presence of Idris Elba. Karen thinks Donna should come home, but Jack convinces her that Donna should have a good time. There's no reason to believe that Fenton said it this way. Other than the fantasy journals and dead family, no reason at all. Do you remember how many nights she woke up screaming? 
Probably because Uncle Jack is sneaking into her room at night. Claire has an argument with her boyfriend Michael and goes up to her room with Donna to calm down. He's making me so damn mad, and on top of that, I have killer cramps. So much for getting laid, Michael. Your prom date has cramps. And most people frown when you put ketchup on your hot dog. Thank you. Dude, there are plenty of other students in the sea. After all, he is a shark. <laughs> Another lazy jump scare. What's next? Is a cat or something gonna jump out of the shadows? Michael thinks I'm going away to school just so I can date other guys. The one time he listens to me. After Donna leaves, Claire hears noises and sees Fenton, who solves her boyfriend drama. Oh, so that's what it's like to have cramps. Knowing that Fenton will come for Donna, Wynn arrives at the hotel and warns the staff. Have you seen this man tonight? No. He dangerous? Only if your name is Donna. You got exits here. How many exits you got? He's not acting. Egress Elbow just wants to get the hell out of there. When Claire does not return, Michael speaks with Donna. You're gonna lose her. Yeah, I doubt that. He can check the hotel's lost and found. Up in the room, a drunk Michael thinks he sees Claire attempt to hide in the closet. <laughs> you know, for a slasher movie, the kills so far are repetitive and lack any imagination. I would have tied Michael to the mattress and fed him to the bed bugs. Meanwhile, a bellhop is sent up to find Maria, the missing housekeeper. She's right here in my room. Turning down the bed. And Fenton knows all about being turned down. Whenever a bellhop demands a tip, strangle him! On the way to their room, Lisa bumps into the killer, who seems familiar. While making out with Ronnie, Lisa realizes it's Fenton and runs off to warn Donna. Idiots are always fooled by the baseball cap disguise. Hey! Excuse me, stranger. Have you seen Evil? He was supposed to feed me lunch. Yesterday. Since the elevator is taking too long, Lisa takes the stairs, but is betrayed by her footwear. <laughs> wow, what a surprise heel turn! Fenton chases Lisa down to a lower floor that's unfinished. Just like the script. What's next? Is a cat or something gonna jump out of the shadows? Ahoy, hoy, my good- Shut up, Dr. Oddcoitus! Look, I don't know if I can finish this remake. There's just too many obvious jump scares. I mean, what's next? Is someone gonna bump into a lamp? Fuck! Lisa attempts to flee. <laughs> Key word, attempts. But Fenton catches her. <laughs> Thank God he wasn't an art teacher. His splatter painting sucks. But all splatter paintings suck. Wynn and his partner find the body of the real Howard Ramsey in the hotel parking lot. No wallet, no ID, no credit card, no money. No ID or money? No wonder he's sleeping in his car. Little buddy, he's dead. Dead broke. Wynn then gets a key for the room booked under Ramsey's name. Housekeeping! Housekeeping, you want me 
jerk you off? Wynn enters the room and finds the housekeeper's body. Nice! A bleeding housekeeper still leaves a clean tub. Wynn sounds the alarm and has the hotel evacuated. But Donna, ignoring the emergency, goes back to the room to retrieve her mother's shawl and put herself in danger. God damn it! A lamp jump scare? Lamps aren't even scary! Whoa! Oh god! Donna finally runs into Fenton, who sneaks into her room. There isn't a moment when I haven't thought about you, Donna. It's true! His wrist has arthritis. For a moment, Donna manages to lock him out. Donna! Listen! You're a blonde white girl in a horror movie. Don't trip when you run. Also, you're the main character so you'll live. But don't get too attached to that boyfriend. And for the love of God, avoid those jump scares! Fenton smashes his way in, but Donna knows this moron never checks under the bed. It's my go-to hiding spot. Help! I'm stuck! I must have hit a growth spurt. Huh? Hey, we're really stuck! If only I had a sexy stepmom. Oh God, Claire! She spent so much on that dress! Donna decides to flee and runs straight into the strong, safe arms of Idris Elba. Wynn searches the rooms for Fenton, but all he finds is another jump scare. The lack of originality is criminal. For once, I want to press charges. Instead of taking Donna to the station where she'd be safer, Nash takes her home. Tell me you've caught this animal. Uh, don't confuse him. Now Nash thinks he needs to call an exterminator. This is him and they're gonna catch him, okay? I promise. How can you promise me that? With this. Like when I promised I was only 18. Some blood leads Wynn up into the vents, where he discovers the body of the bellhop and realizes that Fenton has already snuck out in the employee's uniform. But do not worry. I'm sure the lone officer outside in the squad car will be enough to keep Donna safe. And he's dead. Damn, and Nash was only one day away from being fired. Donna. Oh my gosh. You scared me. You're not even trying now, are you, movie? The medicine cabinet. No. They wouldn't. Another jump scare. And it was all a dream? That's double the suck! I need my pills! <laughs> Thursday, Friday, happy days! <laughs> what? You couldn't work pigeons and a lamp into a bathroom? Okay. Oh, it better be to take a Mondo Duke! After getting back into bed, Donna discovers that Bobby's neck is bleeding. <laughs> she really needs to calm down on those hickeys. Donna sees a shadow in the hall and hides in the closet. The area under her bed is going to be so jealous. The shadow turns out to be Wynn, but Fenton has secretly been in the closet this whole time. If only for Donna's sake. Little does he know, being nervous makes her gassy. <laughs> Suddenly, Wynn hears Karen scream, demanding to hear from the detective in charge about the dead cop in her driveway. So I got offices down, I need backup now, now! Now he calls for backup? I'm starting to think that Wynn is a loser. 
They might as well bring two more body bags for the girl's guardians. Fenton prepares to kidnap Donna, but she fights back, and a violent struggle ensues. That's how I feel shopping at GameStop. Do you have any trade-ins? No. Want to pre-order any upcoming games? No. Do you want the protection plan? No. Do you want to sign up for the magazine? No. Do you want any used games or controllers? GameStop! No means no. Wynn returns and shoots Fenton seven times. A bullet for every lame jump scare. Donna, I've just been trying to tell you. I'm falling for you. Yeah. Fenton now realizes the sex in prison wasn't so bad. Donna mourns over Bobby. Who will never see his 30th birthday. Donna's aunt and uncle run into the room while Wynne hugs and consoles her. <sighs> it's over, it's over. Okay. Hold for one last jump scare. This feels like another dream. Wait, that's the end? Not only is Donna bland, but she has no arc or growth. Instead of becoming the hero and defeating her stalker, she remains the victim? Movie. What the fuck? <laughs> what did we learn today? Don't go to the prom? Hell, don't go to school! Besides for the title, the remake of Prom Night shares nothing in common with the original. But hell, none of the sequels did either. Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, is a batshit crazy possession movie. Demon. Demon. Ah! The original was a mediocre horror mystery movie about revenge. Is the killer the grieving father? The creepy janitor? Or the known offender who is wrongfully accused? I'm innocent. <laughs> Well, just like Halloween 2, the big twist is that the killer is Jamie Lee's brother. Robin. Robin. Another killer brother? Quick, do a DNA test on the fog! In the remake, we know from the very beginning who the killer is, so there's no mystery or any suspense. The remake is dull, predictable, forgettable, and full of every slasher movie cliché. Minus the blood and boobies. <laughs> I actually thought I was watching the PG-13 version, but no, this was unrated. The unrated cut only restores one minute of footage, and it's still tame enough to pass for PG-13. This remake holds the dishonor of being the first slasher film in history to be PG-13. With a runtime of 90 minutes, it felt 90 minutes too long. The scares are cheap. Out of the dozen jump scares, three are mirror scares. Yes, this movie was made for teenage girls. But Goosebumps is scarier than this. There's also a bunch of boring teen drama that's pointless and goes nowhere. They're gonna announce king and queen. Maybe you won't even win. Like, O-M-G. I like, can't believe he said that. If he were any dumber, I'd have to water him. True, he's as dumb as a brick. Thirsty? Our main character is useless, and the villain's motivation is vague and simplistic. He's got to be the most boring slasher in history. Leatherface, Michael, Jason, Freddy, and Chucky will now be joined by... Teacher in baseball hat? Despite a decent body count of 14, most of the kills are repetitive, unimaginative, bloodless, or take place off-screen. If my eyes don't see it, 
It didn't happen! Just like the moon landing. After all these years, we're finally going to the prom! And we're gonna dance all over this remake, because it's getting the boot! Prom night! It's a night! To die for! This has been Andy, the Maniacal Cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.